This video is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. A few days ago, I saw Oppenheimer, uh, the latest from Christopher Nolan. I watched this about an hour after Barbie, and I can't tell if it was the right decision at the end of the day. On one hand, while I preferred to start the day in a good mood before settling into something this serious, I also ended a great day at the movies with existential dread. Leaving the Oppenheimer screening in my all-pink outfit, I just felt like a, a buffoon. Oppenheimer, if you are somehow not in the know, is a movie about J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. Uh, yeah. Like I mentioned, I left this movie a bit overwhelmed by everything. The film is not only dense with information, but it's also cinematically intense. There are big movies, and then there are big and loud movies, and then there are big, loud, and fast movies, and this is a member of that third camp. It's also about pretty intense subject matter, so it was just a lot. What Nolan has done here is something pretty incredible. He's made a movie that is mostly guys talking in rooms, a type of movie I can always get down with, but he's managed to make these conversations feel like action scenes. He's able to communicate the weight of these conversations, communicating both the significance of the actions the characters are committing, but also the psychological effects these actions have on the characters, the intensity of their morality clashing with their ambitions, which is why I found the movie so overwhelming and dense. You're not only taking in all of this information and story, but you're also feeling the effect of it at the same time. It's somehow one of the most powerful and personal examples of how cinema can be used to tell a story, and it's also just a little clunky to me. Uh, let's get into it. Technically speaking, I think this is one of Nolan's best. It's hard for me to confirm that because every time he comes out with a new film, it's the best of its time. He's always a few steps ahead of everyone else when we're talking technical stuff. So it's hard to say which Nolan film is the most ahead of its time, but I do think this is pretty, this is pretty close. I think I noticed his attention to detail the most here when it comes to sound and cinematography because he doesn't have an action scene to fall back on. He's using his loud and extreme approach in tiny office spaces, which really just feels like him proving that he can make any place in, in any room feel like the most dramatic thing imaginable. Something that would usually annoy me but doesn't in this movie is the fact that the score is playing for pretty much 90% of the movie. I'm willing to bet money that there are less than 10 scenes where music is not playing in the background but I think it works. Not only because the music itself by Ludwig Goransson is really beautiful, I've been listening to it on loops and seeing the film, but I also think the music is so synced up with the film itself and never feels repetitive, giving it this engine-like quality that keeps the film moving and on pace, never giving the audience a chance to snap out of the spell it puts you under. It uses a lot of like interesting noises that, that really match the tone of the film, a lot of booms and cracks. And this is something about the film that can also be owed to the editing by Jennifer Lame, one of the best editors working today. Nobody is cutting together conversations as thrilling as she is. Topped off with the incredible cinematography by Hoyt Van Hoytema, someone who I've talked about before on this channel. Again, probably up there with Deacons for me as far as cinematographers go. He has yet to do anything less than astonish me with his work, and this is one of the best examples. Again, making small rooms feel massive, using overblown lighting to create discomfort. That entire scene of the Trinity test, the, the use of light there is just so cool to me. I've never seen anything like it. It doesn't look the way you think it'll look. It's just so bright and yet menacing. The whole movie is really tight and claustrophobic, and that's not something you really notice till after the fact, because you're just so in it. I mean, that's what great filmmaking is, right? Y you shouldn't notice it, you should just be in it, and this film is a great example of this. You can make this argument for some of his other films, and maybe this is just the recency bias talking, but I truly think this is the most I've ever seen Nolan's obsession with scale and being large work harmoniously with the story he's trying to tell. To watch a filmmaker like this take such wordy, psychological source material and make it feel larger than life is a pretty unique experience that left me inspired and in awe. Something funny about Nolan in this movie at least is that he is either turning sound up as loud as humanly possible or going completely silent. There's no in between with this guy. And again, I think that works. The volume only becomes noticeable in one scene when it literally starts peaking and gets a little fuzzy, an intentional choice that I didn't even know was allowed, but he's patient with how he builds into these louder deafening scenes, which makes it so that by the time you're in it, it's too late to prepare, which only made the moments where he chooses to go completely silent, that much more effective. You feel the regret and the existential dread on Killian Murphy's face in that speech scene after the bombing when the voices disappear and it's just him and the harsh reality of the situation. That scene specifically is just really powerful stuff. It, it left me a bit shaky. A common complaint with Nolan's work is that it's confusing. Tenet especially, which I sort of just accepted I was going to be confused by going into it and ended up having a pretty good time because of that. And Oppenheimer is, compared to his other work, relatively straightforward. I mean, you could even call it a, you know, a Wikipedia type movie. There's a lot of information, sure. I'd be lying if I said I could tell you every single thing that was said and that happened in this movie. 
but I was there enough. What this movie is to me, to put it as simply as humanly possible, is a smart guy who created something evil and in many ways destroyed the world and then was punished for it both by his own community and by his own mind. A devastating and complicated story that Nolan makes absolutely riveting. In fact, many have theorized the movie could be him grappling with his own guilt regarding his work and how it's changed the industry. A cool way of looking at it that I thought was a bit of a stretch at first, but now that I've seen the film, I, I can see that as a genuine possibility, especially because he literally casted Robert Downey Jr. I don't think that was un- thought of, which is to say this is the deepest Nolan has gone with a character, albeit it's the first real person he's made a movie about, but by doing this extensive research I think he got as close as he could with telling an entire life on film, which I think is seriously impressive. All of which rests on Killian Murphy's performance, a committed and disturbing performance that might just be the best acting I've seen all year, I, I feel pretty confident in saying that. His face is saying so much in every scene, it's really something special, I think we'll be talking about this one for a very long time. Everyone is great here. I do wish there was some more Florence Pugh. She steals the show as always. Benny Safdie is really amazing. I, I don't know why people aren't talking about him as much. Matt Damon delivers. Josh Peck. Uh, sure. Robert Downey Jr. was also really amazing. So glad to see him in something that isn't Marvel for the first time in forever. There are too many actors to talk about in one video, so I think I will just leave it there. Just really strong cast here. Clearly, I really liked this movie, um, but I've really only seemed to talk about the technical stuff, right? It, it, I, but that's kind of something you know going into it, that no one's going to make a great movie technically. Like I mentioned at the top, I did find it to be a little clunky. Part of me thinks I just need to see it again, and that I have a tiny little brain and couldn't take in everything off just a single viewing, sure. But at the same time, I think while you do get this energetic, extreme, loud style of filmmaking, you lose the emotional perspective a bit in the process. It's hard not to feel tapped in and to not feel immersed when he's just throwing these large images and sounds at your face. But where I feel like this film really shines are the moments where I feel this deep connection to Oppenheimer in a way where it, it dives into really uncomfortable territory. I did walk away from Oppenheimer with a sense of existential dread with an outlook on the world that was a little depressing and not exactly hopeful, but I owe that to the final scene alone, a really powerful powerful and simple way to end a really intense and bloated experience. But in typical Nolan fashion, there are stretches in here where I feel like I'm just trying to stay on the tracks and understand everything he's throwing at me, and, and not really understanding at all. I think it's thrilling because of just the way he presents it to you, he's, he's yelling at you basically. That said, there are moments in here because of this approach where I didn't feel particularly close to the story he's telling here. In fact, I felt just a wee bit distant at the end of it all. And that's fine, I think it is a bit unreal realistic to expect to feel close to a man like Oppenheimer by the end of this movie, but I have to admit I think the film suffers a little bit from trying to tell too much, to retell the entire Wikipedia article, rather than going into deeper, more interesting places like Oppenheimer's inner psyche. Maybe that's just me, wishing I got a different movie than the one that we got here, or maybe I just need to see it again, but this clunkiness was definitely an aspect of the film that held it back a little for me. All that said though, regardless, I think this is a seriously impressive piece of work. I've sat with it a little bit now, and can already feel it growing on me. I have not been able to stop thinking about it, and that's the first time that's ever happened with a film of his personally. Would I call this his best? Um, you know, in some ways I can. It is definitely a Nolan film, and flaunts his style as much as any other film of his, and it uses time in a way that doesn't necessarily confuse the audience. I guess to summarize, I can definitely say it's his most human film yet, a, a huge accomplishment for him, even if I struggle to connect with it the way I wanted to. But I can also safely say this will not be the last time I watch this movie, and I will probably continue thinking about this movie for a very long time. I think, for now, that's all I gotta say. Fellas, he's done it again. Thanks for watching, go watch Oppenheimer and form your own opinion, and before you head out. My voice is a little messed up because I went to a Beyonce concert last night, but I'd like to thank this week's sponsor, Squarespace, the best place to build a website and make that idea of yours happen. They have a thing called Fluid Engine, which is a next generation website design system, where you can start with the best thing class website template and customize every design detail with reimagined drag and drop technology for desktop or mobile. If you're looking to go into film or, or really any kind of art, uh, you're going to need a portfolio and Squarespace
Squarespace has exactly what you need to make that happen. You can host video content, organize your video library, and showcase your content on beautiful video pages and sell access to your videos with member areas. And to make that whole process that much easier, they have an asset library where you can upload, organize, and access all your content from one place. It's super helpful. And the best part is you can go to squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, go to squarespace.com slash Carson to get 10% off of your first purchase. I'm going to go drink some water now.